Alright. Are we going? Yeah. Okay. What I'm finding most people aren't doing before they start machining anything, whether it's a rotor or a drum, is not cleaning off the brake blades. And you should wipe it down completely to sweep it into the trash can and start with a clean brake blade. Okay? Now this brake blade does not have anything mounted to decide if it's, if it's going to be drums or rotors. We could go either way. We could go with rotors with this adjust uh, engagement or we go drums with this engagement and we change our head whether we're a drum or rotor. So let's do a rotor first. So I'm going to put my head on right here. Mount my head on that for rotors. Take my little nut and just run it down loose, not tight. Okay, just loose. Loosen up my lock nuts and then I, if these were all the way out, my bits, I'm going to bring them all the way back in. Why don't you zoom in on that so you can see. And then before I ever start, I check to make sure my bits are tight. And not only that, I check my bits to make sure that if they're not chipped. If they're chipped or is there any kind of burr, I need to change them or flip them. So this one right here, I think I need to flip. So let me get a screwdriver. And I'm going to loosen up this screw. Blow it off. And then I'm just going to rotate this one way. There's three edges on each one, or I could flip it upside down. There's a really good edge right there. So I'm going to actually use that edge right there. But you could actually see that there's this edge right here is completely chipped up. So you couldn't use that, but this one's never been used. So, put the screw back on this side, but always check your bits. I'm not seeing anyone do that. And if you machine anything with a bad bit, you're going to ruin your rotor or your drum. Okay. So, let's see right there. Right there. I'm just going to screw it down. You just screw it down snug, not tight, because you could snap the screw off inside there. Run it down until it's snug, and that's it. We're good. Back these all the way off, move it out of the way. Now the rotor we're going to machine is a hubless rotor. So this is a hubless rotor. No hole. The hole is there's no bearings, so we can't mount this without a hub. So let's mount a hub first. Our hub assembly is going to be this guy, and then it's going to be a, a cone adapter. A spacer, another spacer, and then a nut. So this is going to be the assembly that I put on this brake lathe. And my rotor is going to be smashed in between the cone and the hub itself. So we can just put this whole thing right on. And I'm going to use a spacer. And always a vibration down there. And then my locking nut. And you got to turn it counterclockwise, this left handed thread. Give it a bump. And we're good. Next, let's go ahead and take this off and pull off the pieces that we just put on. And grab my rotor. And then it's going to go rotor with the part that goes out from the wheel here. Then my cone, my cone centers it. You can already see it tightening up. And it doesn't matter what spacers you put in order. It could be either way. It could be thick and small. These don't matter. You go either way. The whole point is centering that rotor up on the, on a, on the hub that we created. Tighten it down. And before I t really tighten it, I like to spin it on top of the hub. And it actually will tighten itself up and give it a pop. So now we have the rotor attached to our arbor through making a hub. 
then come over here. And now we're going to line our bits up. So have the bits all the way backed off and you just center it. And you want this line right here equal to the arbor angle here. Just center it nice and straight and give it a tight, a snug. Not tight, just snug. And now we're ready. We need to put our belt on, our silencing belt, right here. Just kind of pinch it down, put that silencing belt on. And then a lot of us aren't using these, but these guys right here are also for reducing the chatter or, or, or noise produced by the brake light. So these guys are actually never were used. These are the bad ones, but I'm going to show you how you mount these. You put these on each side of the rotor like this. You squeeze them and you would tighten this down and that would prevent any kind of a squeal coming from here that the belt doesn't take care of. But we won't use these right now. Push those out of the way. Okay. All right, so we're ready. I'm gonna go ahead and start my brake lathe, and I, what I need to do is I need to do a scratch cut. Okay, now we're doing a rotor, so if we're not doing a drum, always make sure this is tight, so this arbor can't move in and out. And I'm gonna run this down, and I'm gonna do a scratch cut. I'm looking to make a scratch. in my rotor. Simple scratch. And you should see the scratch kind of pulsating right there. Now I'm going to back it off, turn it off, and I'm going to rotate my rotor one half turn. So I got to loosen it. Right, the other way. Loosen it. I'm going to spin it one half turn and tighten it down. And the only reason to do a scratch cut is to make sure that this is square with my arbor. Okay, so here's the scratch I made. We're right, let's see, you see it? Right here's my scratch. So if I do another scratch, I'm looking for it to be right next to it. So I'm going to start back up. Move this in a little bit, and I'm going to make another scratch, and hopefully it's right in the same place. And you see it kind of pulsating back and forth, back and forth. So what I need to do is do one more scratch cut and see if I can get a little bit better. Put this on, loosen it, spin it, tighten it down, and do one more scratch cut. And we're looking to see if we get two cuts that are side by side. And I see two side by side right now. Where is it? Right here. Two scratches. One's right here, and one's right here. So I know for sure now that this is squared up with my arbor. We're set. So come on this side. Let's set our bits. This is set, I'm going to tighten this, I'm going to run this down until it hits. Once when it hits, I tighten it and I want to take the outer lip off, there's always a lip right here. Take that outer lip off. Okay, we're good. Okay. Back my bits off and now we're going to go all the way in. And this is where we get ready to cut. I'm going to do till it hits, tighten it, go till it hits on this side, the other side over here, tighten it. Now I'm going to take off this inner lip. Once when I take the inner lip off, we're ready to cut. So I'm at 40. We could turn this to zero if we really wanted to. And I'm going to loosen it, go three notches, stop. This side, why don't we just do seven? It doesn't matter. All I'm after is three notches. Three notches. Lock both these down. Lock this notch. Make sure this is locked. And there's one more down here. 
that needs to be loose because this is going to slide across this shaft. And then I'm going to go slow cut right now. And we're ready. We'll do a, half of it a slow cut and half of it a fast cut. The one thing you should never do is walk away from this machine. Because if somebody were to walk by this machine and hit this lever right here, that would engage the feed for the drum and you would destroy a rotor. So this should never be used with a rotor. And don't leave this alone so that way we don't get someone acting goofy and hit the brake leg for the drum. We're doing pretty good. See if I got this. I might be able to get this off and see if it turns that up. Nope. So I could do another cut. If I wanted to, and that would clean that up. That's actually a groove right there. Let's see. Okay, well, I'll, let's go and do another cut. It's not cutting anymore. I'm gonna go back. And let's do a fast cut. So we know for sure that this is not cutting right here, and I could feel that groove. And that groove is about Probably 8,000. So let's go four notches on this side. Four notches more, which is about four thousandths of an inch here. This side, I'm just going to go a little bit deeper, so a half a notch. And let's do a fast cut. So you go forward for a fast cut, and we'll see how much faster if we clean that up. Looks pretty good chance. Still no. Wow, that was a pretty good ridge. Let's go back and do one more. Add another, let's go another two notches. And we'll clean that completely up. Twelve minutes. Okay, so we still are not quite there. I would do another cut, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna call it quick. Let it go all the way out. I'll show you the last step with the memory cloth. This side's coming out great. So I would do another cut on the other side, but this side came out really good. No squeal, no growling, nothing. It's coming out really smooth on this side. So I'm pretty happy. I just need to do another cut on this side to clean this up. Since we're good, put it on stop, move this to the neutral position, back this all the way off, and then come over to this side and do an emery clock. And you can see it changing the pattern. And then go to both sides. And what that does, it creates a non-directional crisscross finish on this. You can see it go this way and go this way. So it's a crisscross pattern and it's nice and smooth. And this side I would have to do one more cut to clean this up, to get this cleaned up. But it actually is pretty close. But I would do one more cut and clean this completely up all across. Cut.
We're good.